Hey, what's up, guys? This is the Spiritual Philanthropist. I am Rob Shiva. You know, I don't know what to say here, guys. I, uh, I've i been watching this gentleman's show, Indisputable, uh, with Rashad Ritchie. I really love watching his programs. Um, he brought up a, a video the last time that I saw that was with um, a, the younger... This was the uh, uh, young guy that was uh, Roger Forsman, the young uh, African-American... That was in the Air Force. His younger brother is also in the Air Force. Now, uh, Roger Forsman was killed by cops. And not too long after, his younger brother is also has been killed as well. Now, I don't know what to say about that because he was also in the Air Force as well. These are two young, smart men with ambition, very good kids. And to hear tragic stories like this always breaks my heart because I think that the people that are doing these things literally have no sense of humanity uh, there's something wrong with the race of people here in this country that uh seem to think that violence is okay and that's the only answer that they can keep coming up with you know it, it just sickens me deep down inside when i think about it if you want to call this the human race what kind of human race is it when it lacks the human part of it because if you have any humanity inside of you you wouldn't want to take the lives of, of these young people, no matter what color, what gender, what religion. This is something that, that's been uh, prominent within the white American culture, especially, and Europeans as well. And I think it's, uh, it's something that needs to be discussed. I'm not looking to say that everybody's racist or anything like that. I'm saying that within all cultures, we have good and bad. And this is something that really needs to be addressed. You know, it's something that we need to have a conversation about. But let's take a look at the video and see what it's about. One of the most tragic stories you heard this year now has another tragedy. Do you remember Mr. Fortson who was shot and killed by a deputy uh, as the deputy decided to simply shoot upon the man opening his door? His brother... Roger Forsen was fatally shot as well. Here's a reminder of the original reporting. Are they fighting or something? She was saying that it happens frequently, okay. but this time it sounded like it was getting out of hand. Not to be funny here, but if you listen to that voice, and I'm not sure who that voice is, but I know, to me, it sounds like a Caucasian woman. And I did a video before talking about the danger of Caucasian women, especially towards dark-skinned men, black men especially. They can say one word, anything, and cause a young black man or old black men, but mostly young, to lose their lives, lose their livelihood completely. There's an imbalance in power structure here and also an abuse of that power that is weighing heavily on, on uh, the young men of color, especially African-Americans. Um, this stereotype that they want to portray for so many years, um, you know, all black people are bad and all this stuff and they're violent and this and that. Where do you think violence comes from in this country? Violence was uh, propagated by the same people who, who started slavery and genocide and killed off the entire, entire Native American culture. Uh, Dave Chappelle said something really interesting at one point in time. He says, what makes, you know, uh, great people lose their minds and start waving guns saying that they're out to kill me, they're out to get me. He was talking about Martin Lawrence at the time. And, uh, and then Martin Lawrence ended up having a stroke after that. He said, what could cause people to do that? He says, the, you know, the environment just may be a little sick. And when he said that, it really rung a bell because what he means by that, you know, if you look at that, is that he's saying that the environment, the matrix, if you will, what we live in has been made, you know, created in such a way that it perpetuates the idea of violence, you know, and uh, it does it through Hollywood. It does it, does it by news, by almost anything you can think any kind of medium you can think of violence is a part of it somehow and uh, it's one thing uh, you know to watch violence on TV or in movies and stuff like that but then to have an entire history and culture that they teach in school 
is something that we need to really stop and think about like what are we teaching you know our kids and uh hollywood also should kind of like stop and think about how they're um you know going about the uh, business of making movies and with the action stars and all these stars that are you know these one man lone killers and all these things they're, they're, you know when these people see these movies a lot of these lone action stars are caucasian men and everybody wonders later on why caucasian men when they're in high school a lot of them seems to be uh these high school killers just lose their minds and the first option they think of the first solution is uh let's get a gun go into a school and and start killing everyone and this has been a an epidemic in, in our in our society here in america you know the funny thing i'm just going to mention this because it goes through my mind is anytime i've made videos talking about this youtube always tries to give me shit about it which doesn't make any sense but it makes me believe that maybe youtube might have an issue with race as well maybe the people that are running youtube i'm not sure but i would want to say that there may be a problem within all social media about race and uh or if not race it's got to be something that maybe they're not human i'm just like hypothetically speaking here because they kind of leave out the humanity part of it you know they'll show things about dogs and cats and animals and and people doing kind things but when you have to get to the nitty-gritty of things and actually talk about why do people do these things why are people killing each other they don't want that conversation i find that interesting and you'll see that i've had a lot of videos where i talk about it and they have basically not allowed me any playtime. and i know people want to hear about this stuff it's important but let's go ahead and look at the rest of the video even though i don't want to actually because i know what's going to happen I'm not even sure what to say about what I just saw. He shoots and then says, drop the guns. And this all started because I'm 100% sure that was a Caucasian woman just now that said that they were hearing noise there. We find out later on in this video that uh, you'll hear it in a minute where he was not fighting with anyone. He was on the uh, on a video call with his girlfriend and he heard the doorbell ring and he heard somebody yelling so you know after having his brother killed by the cops that was a smart thing to walk through the door with a gun in your hand but what i think is horrible is these people that do these things these white men that do these things and white women as well they're heartless they are completely heartless and it's disgusting it really is disgusting i'm sure that they've killed so many people in this country people of color and they hide it and they go you know they, they hide it and they disguise it and they want to pretend that it doesn't happen you know there, there's been stories of firemen recently that you know an old uh, white uh, fireman said that the reason he quit working was that they left so many young black children to die purposely intentionally you know and uh and we already know what the police do i've also heard stories that uh during uh 9 11 they a lot of some of the employees were killing off muslims that came in for simple things and they ended up dying. I have a friend that, you know, one of his um, family members died, I think, by the hands of some of these people. Because I know what the hatred was like. And for some reason in this country, love is not something that's prominent here. Hatred is very prominent in this country. And they seem to protect it in some way or another, you know. And I, I don't know why that is, why uh, people would allow other people to be harmed in that manner like i said we're living in a violent world and a violent country america and uh violence beget violence guys you know and uh it's unfortunate this is the world we live in to see something like this uh you know it breaks my heart man you know he's a young man and uh so many young lives so many young black lives have to go through this you know like they lose out on their entire life because of some guy that just has a bad 
um, understanding of life and uh, something's wrong with him spiritually and he would want to take the life of an innocent man. But, you know, hopefully things will change in the future. I don't know, but we have to pray for it. You know, I meditate about it too. So let's uh, look a little bit further. Oh, shots fired. Shots right there. Do not move. It was no suspect. There was no disturbance at his apartment. He was FaceTiming with his lady friend at the time this happened. The deputy knocks on the door. He's military, he's Air Force. He's wondering who is knocking on my door like this. He tells his lady friend, just hold on for a minute, let me check this out. He looks through the peephole. He doesn't see anybody, why? Because the deputy decided to sidestep the peephole. Once again, this is not a suspect for anything. There's no verification this is a suspect. So he goes, he grabs his gun. He is a licensed gun owner and he's in the military. He's trained. He does what his training tells him to do, which is you do not lift that gun until you have identified a threat. So his gun remained on his side. The officer had similar training. You do not lift that gun until you see a threat. One man followed his training. The other man did not. The man that followed his training is dead. The man that did not is fired. With millions watching and men. I don't know what to say, guys. I've seen so many videos like this that, it, like I said, it saddens my heart very deeply. And, uh, you know, there are some black people that defend these things, too. And I think that you get to a point. If you've ever heard of the Stockholm Syndrome, where the hostage starts to see and understand the plight of the terrorist that's holding the hostage hostage, right? And uh, I think that's what's happening to black people here in this country and many other people, is that you know that it's such an overpowering force that you start to see things in their way. It's a sad but true reality that we live in guys look I, I can't talk about this anymore because it's just like I said my heart breaks for these people and for these children these young people and it, it's you know this this is something in this country that needs to uh, be put to an end somebody needs to stop it you know uh, how many more lives does it take for them to get involved we thought black lives matter would do it that doesn't seem to do much you know but um, who knows what the solution will be. I'll keep brainstorming on my end. I hope other people do it and we start conversation about it. Because it's a conversation, a conversation that needs to be uh, had. You know, we need to talk about it. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. This is a spiritual philanthropist. I am Rob Shiva. And uh, stay safe, guys. Treat people with kindness and animals. Be kind to animals as well. See you in the next video.